casually dressed and deep in conversation with me, Greg Chalmers. CDDC is sponsored by Pizza Daddy, Lanarkshire's number one American style pizza parlour. To stay up to date on new flavours and promotions, then get connected on the socials. The Instagram handle is at Real Pizza Daddy and the website is www.thepizzadaddy.co.uk. To see what we are getting up to here at Casually Dressed, then you can find us on Instagram with the handle at CDDC Podcast and on Twitter it is at Podcast CDDC. Also, as you're watching this on YouTube, then please hit those like and subscribe buttons. And with me this evening is my co-host, is this bin bag full of custard, it's Christopher Shields. How's it going, big man? You alright? I'm good. Oh, you didn't like that one. Look at him. <laughs> yeah, I'm alright. I'm happy. I'm happy. Oh, I like it. You're alright. Right, okay. I'm happy, mate. Um, our guest this evening is stand-up comedian Jamie Kirk. How are you doing, sir? Ah, not bad. How are you? Brilliant, mate. Yeah, good, man. Good. Good, good. stuff. Thanks for having me. Not yeah. a problem at all, mate. Not a problem. I just I'm looking at Chris, man. He just looks does not look impressed that I called him a bin bag full of custard. <laughs> It's alright, mate. I've got broad shoulders. I can take it, and we'll, we'll roll on, man. We'll roll I feel on. scared now because I don't good. know what he's harboring. <laughs> 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 um, so, Jamie, um, for anyone who doesn't know or hasn't seen you live, there's a very right. sort of specific part of your comedy that fucking made me piss me off. Is the fact you're a bus driver? Right, aye, that's uh, that allegation is true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I, pre- I presume that that comes with a fair amount of public exposure. Aye, yeah. aye, certainly. <laughs> uh, I've, I've been doing bus driving for nine years now, um, and I'm, I'm only 30 years old, so it's like a big part of my life now. <laughs> Starting to sink in, like, I've been here a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and then I, so it's public exposure, I, I see, I see a lot of things. That's how the uh, kind of, I started writing things down, um, and then I, that's what the comedy started. I've been doing comedy uh, for about, just over two years before uh, lockdown, the coronavirus yeah. uh, started, and then... So before that, I was just writing. I'd been to, I never went to comedy clubs a lot. I'd maybe go once or twice a year, which I think is probably maybe. I think that's kind of what the people that go to comedy. Like, you all get regulars that will go all the time, but there's a lot of people that only go uh, a couple of times. I don't know why I'm talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> why didn't they listen? We're just we're here to listen and talk shit, yeah. man. That's super fun. Uh, uh, well, that's like the thing is, it's always a different audience. That's why people just keep saying the same thing over and over again. Like, that's why I'm getting that. I try to yeah. um, but I so driving buses, seeing a lot of shit, writing it down, and I thought, right, I've been to a few shows. I went to a few open mics, Red Rose, had a look and thought, right, I want to, I want to have a shot at this. And uh, I thought, right, if I can do one or two and a good experience, see what happens. And then after that, I loved it. I thought, right, let's see if I can do maybe 10. It was a, My first gig was in a January. I thought, let's see if I can do 10 or 12. Like one a month, once, one a month uh, for that year. So that would be a good year. And I ended up doing like 40 or 50 gigs in that Whoa. first year. Uh-huh. <laughs> I just got the bug and just went and done as much as I could. And then the next year, I'd done even more than like the next year. Um <laughs> And I was starting to kind of get into a stride and try and break into better sports, like weekend sports. Yeah. And then just this is all happening. So it's a fuck it's kind man. of hit, took a dent in the new. So tell me, um, what was, um, we've obviously we've had Tarium on um, and uh, we were speaking to him about like first time going on stage. And, and doing it. And I'm really intrigued because I used to sing and play the guitar years and years ago, right? And it was heavy shite myself. See before you went uh, on, man, the knees are going. You can't you get a pure heavy dry throat. So uh, But there is like a, you still really want to do it, but at the same time you fucking don't want to do it. Do uh, you, yeah. And um I so why what what made you want to do it? I don't know, I just wanted to I just I remember thinking in fact I remember uh I was in the stand for my my brother's thirtieth birthday which was probably about six or seven years ago. Uh, and I was watching it, and I, it was a Saturday night, and I was thinking, that would be amazing, like, if you could just go and do that. 
like obviously that's like their like full time job. Yep. Yeah. Um, but I just I, and I just thought that would be amazing just to go and do that. Um, but I because talking about that like that's their full time job, which is amazing to be able to do that as a full time job because you get people like people in my work all the time or or, or you're the next you're, well it's kind of a bit overcome over um whatever they're trying to say me and say oh you're the next Kevin Bridges but obviously like that's a bit ambitious to think oh I'm yeah. going to be like yeah. I know I'm not the next Kevin Bridges. <laughs> and, uh, like but the people would say that to me oh that's what you could you could do that in a couple of years and I'm like no nah, there's only like one or two of them in the world yeah, like, yeah, there's yeah. only like Billy Connolly uh, Frankie Boyle Kevin Bridges they're the only three maybe a couple more that could like go to the hydro like that's not like on my like target <laughs> written. But I to do it full time, like when I was in there on the Saturday night on my brother's thirtieth and we were watching it and I thought that would be amazing to to get to that level. That'd be a huge achievement because there's there'll be thousands of people in the UK mm-hmm. who do it full time uh, mm-hmm. and you'd never have heard of them. Yeah. But these people in my work are like, Oh Frankie Boyle, Kevin Bridges. Yeah. Uh, I'd yeah. oh, we guy, we guy it's we funny, right? Yeah. <laughs> It was like, oh, because he, he, he's honestly, I'm not mentioning him, but he's a wee fan. Um, <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> aye, aye. He keeps, on, he keeps on saying, so how much do you charge for a ticket? Have you done a show and all that? And I'm like, fucking, like, he's, he's just trying to take the piss. Like, if you want, I'll talk about it if you want to talk about it, but if you're just going to try and take the aye. piss, I'm not interested. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. He said to me recently, he was like, oh, uh, I've seen Lee Evans. Uh, if you're not as good as Lee Evans, you're shite. Like, what? Like I know it's he's just a pure. That's it, he's just, oh, he's uh, just, uh, from us. Just from us at CDDC, you're a knob, right? That's every <laughs> guy. But we fucking don't like you, right? Shut up. But like, see that part. That's the sort. Of, that part is exactly sort of the same part that we used to give to. Remember when like, that guy in your school signed up, signed an S form with like Celtic or Rangers or, yeah. or signed by a pro club. Uh, that's that. He's going to be the next big thing. Man, I know, just, <laughs> might not. <laughs> 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 It might not. The but, and is, then, does, oh, sorry, Chris, carry on. Sorry, and then also, like, when he talks about, I but Kevin Bridges is sold out the hydro and that. I but there was also, like, these guys, like, took a, take a massive gamble. I mean, like, it was, it was another, I was listening to a podcast a while back with, uh, with Russell Kane, and, and he was talking about how he had this, like, really, like, really quite a decent job in marketing and stuff like that. And he was, like, flying up through this company. And basically done like a bit like yourself when fucking you know what I'm gonna go I'm gonna have a go at this. Done an open mic night and then that was it. Got a first laugh and it was just like a like a drug just got like uh, whoosh. This is it, this is what I want to do. And then just started gigging and gigging, like open mic spots everywhere, like fucking what is uh, a cupboard? Uh going pl- going and playing any yeah, I mean playing anywhere. But he was up and down the country and then just took a pure gamble at it and just went, Right, this is gonna be me. Just two footed it, yeah. You know I mean but uh, like he's he's a lucky case for, for the statistics out there. There's probably a lot of people that do that and then it doesn't work. You know what I mean because aye, aye. You know what I mean just because of the nature of of the industry and how well, things are. We had Ian Pringle on and he was talking about how he played oh, some place in Glasgow and it was like he he went oh, on after the guy a, playing the bass. The bass. <laughs> just a guy on, oh, on stage right. just playing the bass. <laughs> just one oh. guy. <laughs> I saw it was like a. I think I might know what he's talking about, but I don't think I've ever been there. Were you but... on? Uh? Were you on before the bass player? <laughs> I, I dropped everyone off. And the <laughs> was like, Fuck that, man. I'm not getting involved. I'm a, I'm a driver. <laughs> no, I, that's a kind of what's that called? Like a kind of like a various kind of different a variety night. Aye, I have like variety night. Like some, <laughs> but I, uh, that that can be difficult. That I mean, talking about the stuff like that, like dodgy gigs, but. I've been at one like um, something like far worse than that probably, um, like because they go you see all these, these hot, like all these gigs you go to right and uh, we done one uh, up at it was called the Church in the Hill up at um, at the top of Byers Road. I don't know what it is. is. No, is that no? It was no. It was no. It wasn't called that. Sorry, that's. Talking about, somewhere. I'm uh, talking about the Oran The Hillhead Book Club. Oh, the Hillhead Book. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, know how yeah, yeah. stuff, but I uh, the Hillhead yeah. uh, Book Club. Up at the top of Byers Road, um, and at first I was like, "Is this, is this a library?" <laughs> got it. But it's always <laughs> been that it's, it's a yeah. restaurant, isn't it? Yeah, a bar yeah. restaurant. So we turned up to to that gig, and then the 
there was people in, like eating and drinking, and then basically it was just a comedy night getting like the gate. It was a gate crash basically. No, nobody in the building. It was busy, but nobody was there for the comedy. They were all there oh. for a drink, uh, to meet their friends, have some dinner, and then at, like half past eight, it was like right, the comedy night is starting, and we were just like standing in the stairs in the middle, like trying to. Get involved. Like, there's people mm. up the stairs, like playing pool and like uh, table tennis, and uh, like we're just trying. And people eating their dinner, and then there was kids. There was a couple of kids in at the start. <laughs> I'm like, fucking hell! Like, so we can't swear. And the, the person that was organising was like, I just swear if you want. They brought their kids in here, knowing that there's a. And I'm like, are you sure they know about this? <laughs> thing, right? um, but I, that was a that was a weird that was a weird gig. Oh like, man, a comedy gate crash like. They weren't there. Like you need to have the right environment. Of for course. Night. Oh, hundred percent. Uh, that was not the environment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. So I've got a similar story to that. So we had um, I was at a wedding, and um, a guy was a guy's wedding. We were at he he walked the door at a, a gay club, and um, so basically for his wedding, they said he'd get a couple of drag acts in, right? So these two drag acts came in to to get a couple. Like do a do a set at the wedding. Now, everyone was like, oh, that's a great idea. Well, we could have looked forward to that, you know I mean? But then but everyone forgot like just like how much like it's a family wedding, you know I mean so there's kids running about and stuff like you mean these two ah. drag acts and the stuff that was coming out of their mouths, like the minute they started talking, everyone kinda of went oh. <laughs> like look, mate, there was literally like Fucking three rows of kids sat in the uh, dance floor in front of this drag act like that. Uh, <laughs> they're going, oh no. Uh, he <laughs> so, they, the I, they literally they were like, right, okay, let's just lip sync some songs and wrap uh, this shit up. <laughs> <laughs> let's get out of here. It was just like... I mean, Sounds like intent- a good idea. <laughs> I, the intention was great. Delivery didn't come along quite as well, but it, it was... I mean, I enjoyed it because it was, yeah. I just thought it was. I was sat at the back, but this is hilarious. <laughs> so, Jamie, I, um, when we were kind of looking you up and seeing what was what you're all about, we came across what you would have done for the Glasgow Comedy Festival. The... Ah, aye, right. So... Sold out. It was sold out. Never went ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Five so, star reviews. Uh, five star. <laughs> listen, mate. That's we've got to take. You can get it. Um, so tell. So it's, it's. Am I right? It was the 80s Edda bus drive. Uh, ah, the 80s Edda driving buses. Right. Okay. So, um, how t- take us through your process in writing a show? So we spoke to Elliot Bibby, the magician, about this, and. Um, it just it's I think a lot more goes into it than people would think. And especially because yeah. it's not just standing up there and going, Mother in laws, am I right? Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> <laughs> uh, so take us through your process and how you go about it. Well, that that's sort of the the first sort of big show that I have ever done. Um but I think I'm kinda the format that I'm using is kinda not cheating, but I've kinda I've made it so much easier for myself. Like I've, as long as I've got uh, these stories, like, so I've got all these stories from the buses, and I've actually like done a, like an A to Z. So I've got and it'll start off at like A um, is all A is for always late. Like you know, you ever yeah, been on a bus yeah, on time? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, never. So so it's it's literally like an A to Z that I'm going through, and so it was an hour an hour show. I was going to do ten minutes of material that's nothing to do with buses. And like mixing that way, just talking to the people that were there, just to get like, a warm up. And then, yeah. no, in fact, I was going to before that, I was going to have someone on like as a an opener to do ten minutes. Uh, so that's so it's now down to fifty minutes. And then I was going to do five or ten minutes on my own, like MC and or material, not into the buses. And then the AZ was basically forty minutes. So I'd go through that in forty minutes, and I was. And obviously I never got into it, but in the weeks leading up to it, I was going and doing open spots and I was breaking the alphabet down. Right, okay. Uh, like, and I'd go and do like A to E. Uh, like split, I'd split it up into four and then go and practice those four and try yeah. and fit it into 10 minutes. So right, okay. I was fitting them into 10 minutes. Sometimes it was going over. So I was trying to like trim it down so that it would be 
40 minutes. Yep, yep. It probably, it probably would have been, I think, on the night when you're going through it all, it would have been quite tight and like it would have been about 40 minutes and worked out quite well, I think. But um, I, it was good to go and try and like test run it. And but I obviously, I will, I, I plan on doing it again at some point. Just it's just going to be, I don't even know when it's going to. Aye. I mean, even having 50% capacity, like spaced out, I don't know when we'll be able to do that. Because 50, I mean, 50% capacity at a comedy show, you'll notice the difference. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I comedy is going to struggle because you need you need that atmosphere. Yeah. You need everyone. Same with music, like music and comedy. Mm-hmm. You need that electric atmosphere. People crammed in. Like it's it's going to struggle if these are all two meters or a meter apart. Yeah. Um, but I mean that's what Kevin Bridges has said. Kevin, Kevin Bridges has said this before. He's like he prefers playing the, the the bigger gigs, like so, like the SECC or the Hydro that with thousands of people. Because if he tells a joke, like statistically. More people are going to laugh. Somebody's Aye. going to laugh. But if you're playing a room with fifteen people, and none of them find it funny, man, that's just that's <laughs> fucking, <laughs> fucking crickets, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a, that's a hard, it's a hard sell. You know what I mean? So, Jamie, have uh, you got any? Have you got any wee snippets of bus driving stories that you could share with us? Uh, well, I'll tell you this. I don't know if it's funny or no, because I've no had a chance to try it. Right, <laughs> but I, I, I overheard a guy on my bus just three or four days ago, uh, and I could just hear him talking about the football, saying how the, the football was shite with any fans and all that. It's just not the same. And he, he goes on and says, it's just like jumping into a bath with any water. Right? And I was like, that's fucking a weird thing to say. <laughs> See, that's what I mean, it's not going to work. I've no other chance uh, to try it out, right? I put it on Twitter, I get like two likes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, but that is what happened this week. Uh, <laughs> so I wrote it down because I'm always like, like <laughs> but I think I'm going to put that bit of paper on the bin. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, so is that where it comes from? Literally just from like somebody just saying like, a, like the smallest thing and you go... Oh, there's something. I, that, I, I, there's something arms in that. and legs. I, I, uh, I, 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 I can stick to the exact way it happened, or I'll try and exaggerate it. But I just pick stuff up all the time, and I've always get we scrap bits of paper, like ticket roll, uh, where we know it's on it, <laughs> and then just trying to just see if I'm quite with. But I've, I've actually not kind of been thinking too much about it uh, during the whole lockdown. I was just kind of scared onto it all, but I'm starting uh, to kind of try and think right. I need. To try and write down wee things, try and get back into it now. Yep. So a lot yeah. of it is bus stuff, and then like, I've got two kids as well, and like, a oh, girlfriend. Right. Uh, so uh, I, I was trying to think of the word to call there because we're no married, so I don't want to see my missus, uh, I don't want to see my partner, because then you'll think, oh, I wonder if it's a male or a female. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I say, uh, my girlfriend, and we've got, uh, we've got two kids, seven and two. So that's the materials, kind of bus driving and family life. So. Family life, man. Cool, man. Aye. You, you know all about that. You've got I, um, annoying, you? Formerly deep in the dad locker, bro, yeah. Uh, I, 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 can't I go back now? No, can't I go back now, mate. No, definitely Just talking not. to a couple of cunts that love leaving it in. That's what it is. Oh, yeah, mate, that's it's, it's, <laughs> uh, you spend your days having arguments with kids going, no, my, talks, my socks are too squiggly. Can't put them on. <laughs> Does that even mean? Doesn't even mean anything. Yeah, is it? I'm that's so that. glad that I don't have to deal with that bullshit, man. Yeah. Do you know what's weird? The past two podcasts, we've ended up talking about Wayne's. We have, aye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were sitting talking to Ian Pringle about childbirth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll, 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 tell you, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a better bus story, right? Because that's another one. <laughs> uh, well, I, do you want to go back down that route? Right, let's um, do that. So, well, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go into two, two, uh, two stories. Like, one's based on lost property. And the ones based on like gifts. Okay. Because people, and I want to talk as if I'm just talking to you. It's like, I feel like I'm going to end up going into like on stage mode and like oh. how I've said it hundreds of times. And, uh, but I like, so I'll tell you these two stories. So people, like people do come on the bus. And it's even like when getting off the bus, you get people give bus drivers like gifts, basically, like newspapers. Uh, not, not like wrapped up gifts. Like, <laughs> <newspapers. laughs> um, but they'll they'll go off the bus and just like hand stuff in chocolate bars like packets of crisps cans of juice like mm-hmm. hunt, like it happens all the time. Wow! Uh, yeah. And that's like when I <laughs> say this like thinking no I'm a, I don't 
That's why Bush Diamonds are fat, right? I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, no, but like, so that's, 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 that's I talk about it, so that's like one of the best things for being a bus driver is a gift. And, uh, but uh, this one day, <laughs> yeah, this one day, this, this woman was getting off, right? And she handed me something in, uh, and it was wrapped up in the kitchen roll, right? And she handed it in, and she said, there you go, driver, I wee treat for you. Right? And, and I just put it down, I wasn't, I was thought, right, I won't knock at the terminus. I was like, thanks very much, she just carried on. And uh, like, I was thinking about, oh, what, what could this be? Like, and uh, I was just kind of hoping, like this is me on stage, oh, I was hoping that uh, it was a wee empire biscuit, right? <laughs> and, uh, I get, so I get to the terminus and I open up, and then uh, it's a poached egg. That's a true story. I've said that about a thousand times, and I hate saying that. People say me love the story. And people are like, oh, that's a poached egg guy. Okay. Poached egg? But that was a good poached reaction. T- Thanks for that. No worries, mate. But uh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's good poached... that goes down well that story how mate I I, I've got a couple of long... questions how long oh, was yeah. she on the bus for eh how long was she on the bus for she was on the bus I don't know I can't remember getting on I just remember getting off because uh, that, that's cold. how long she'd been cupping that poached egg <laughs> I know just... what did she I... meet two eat one <laughs> did you plan it? Oh, I'm going to get out of the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a spare poached egg? No, I'm going to get you a bus driver. And I never even knew what a poached egg was. <laughs> <laughs> I, to, I was like, is this? I thought it was like a fried egg. But it, it, was, too, it was too tidy. You know, it, was, it must have been, I think you get poached egg things. That you, I don't know. I, I don't like poached eggs. <laughs> I thought I've never, I've never uh, one. It's just the poached egg. That's bizarre. Like, so how long were you driving? How long were you driving in the bus with we poached egg? In the- <laughs> <laughs> I thought I know. I thought I know. It was, uh, was Eglinton Toll. Uh, do you know Eglinton Toll? Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so there's a number three bus, Eglinton Toll, going to Govan. But Govan, you need to go through Silverburn and Cardonald first. So it was about an hour from there, just sitting there. And uh, you, but before before all this happened, the, that bus was a busy bus, so you're getting like you never really had a chance to have a wee look. So, <laughs> I, I, I waited till I got to the terminus, and I was like, here we go. And then, so, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Fucking poached egg. <laughs> <laughs> that is excellent. I just, I've, I've guess this was wonderful thought in my head of her just poaching an egg and just going, Do you know what? <laughs> There's only one left in the carton. I tell you what. <laughs> That's for the driver. <laughs> a wee poached egg for the driver. Poached egg. Poached egg. There you go, son. There a wee poached egg. How would she expect me to eat it? Just in one? I don't know. <laughs> there was, I'm sure there was salt and pepper on it, but I wasn't Some interested. sort of shit oyster. Like that. <laughs> That'll be for, that's for you, son. <laughs> don't eat it all at once. That's fucking bizarre, that's incredible, man. incredible, man. I never even... Uh, I wasn't even ever <clears> going to <throat> see that on stage. It was... My, my, my partner that said to me, oh, 100%, um, man. you should uh, tell that story on stage. And then I thought, fuck it, I'll go for it. How, yeah, I, how, like, I mean, why would you not say on stage? That is fucking bizarre. I don't know. I never really, I, I don't know. You just, I just thought, oh, nobody's going to fucking, like, nobody's even going to believe it. Never mind that. Nobody's going to believe it. But 100%, it happened. Stop the poach there. Uh, <laughs> That's fucking better. So you were saying one of them's gift given. What was the other one you were going to tell us? Oh, lost property. <clears throat> um, go. So that, so that we've covered. See, if you want to buy tickets to the AEZ, the driving buses, we've covered the uh, gifts. Now we're going to that's G. Uh, now we're going to go to Yale <laughs> for lost property. Right. So uh, tickets will be on sale. <laughs> Fuck knows when. <laughs> um, but anyway, you've, you've seen the, the best bit in the way. So does it come? <laughs> <laughs> but that's how they're going to go. This lost property will be shite now because that that was such a good good reaction. That oh, I should mate. have saved that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Anyway, so I, I another thing about the buses is the lost property. <laughs> People right. will leave things on the bus, uh, like umbrellas and mobile phones is probably the two most common things. Yeah. Um, but uh, I've had this was this was about a year and a fact probably. Maybe last winter, 
just before, like November, December, like, it was dark anyway, right? And uh, somebody had left a, like, a, like, a school bag, like a sort of rucksack bag, backpack on the uh-huh. bus. And then it was sitting, same bus actually, number three bus, right? It was sitting, uh, I'd picked up at Scotston and was going out. It's a long, it's a long route. Uh, somebody had said to me, oh, that, that bag's been sitting in a while. I don't know if someone's left it or no. And I was like, that's fine, I'll get it to the terminus. So I got to the terminus and uh, nobody had nobody had collected an empty bus, the bag was still there. I went out, lifted it up, and I was going to fling the bag behind my seat, right? But as I lifted it up, I was like, this is, this is like quite heavy. And I was like, what the fuck is this? So I, I was like, I couldn't just throw it. I was like, I need to have a look. It was too heavy, like I wasn't expecting the weight. <coughs> and I was like, I had to investigate. And uh, I opened up and inside it was like, a, a blue bag, like, and for the off sales, but tied up. So oh. I untied that, and then inside that was uh, a clear bag tied up with a goldfish and then hundreds of water, like, water <laughs> and a, gold, a, a live goldfish. And, uh, <laughs> and that, I was like, what, what am I doing? Like, I was about to fling this behind my feet. <laughs> and, uh, I checked his pulse and all that. No, I checked it. was a, uh, it was alive swimming about, obviously. And uh, I said, "Oh my god, what do this? Like it's a live animal." I just phone, phone up the control room, and uh, they say, oh, "Just, just hand out your lost property." And then, so, so fucking hell, man. hand out right. lost property. Uh, so, I, but I was, I'm on this bus for another three hours before it goes back to the depot. No, I just lost property, and then but then they sent me a message. They sent a message to all the buses saying, "Can the driver with the goldfish contact uh, Central Control?" <laughs> so I, I had to contact them back, and I'm like, "Right, uh, someone has someone's phoned up and said they've lost a goldfish. <laughs> um, they're going to they're going to get you back on on the route." Um, <clears throat> so I was like, right, "I'll look out for them." So I, I drove all the way back. Um, and it was just after Scotston. This guy comes on the bus and is like, oh, I left, I left my backpack. And I was like, what was in it? And he's like, no, oh, it's just a, just a backpack. I left it on. And I was like, what was in it? Tell me what was in it. And he's like, a goldfish. <laughs> and I was like, how the fuck can you leave a goldfish on a bus? And he said that uh, he, thought, he thought his wife had it. And his wife thought that he had it. That's fucking oh. bizarre, man. <laughs> that is so just... it made its way safe home. But I, on, on the way, I was thinking, you know, because I, I, I was seeing it had lost property. I was thinking, I'm not having that any lost property because I think they destroy things after a certain <laughs> amount of time. I'm like, they're not destroying this thing. So I thought, I'll, I'll have to take this up the road. Man. <laughs> this will be See if I come up the road with a goldfish, they'll be delighted. <laughs> And then he comes on and gets it, so... You wonder about people, but don't you, man? Oh, I... I think, do you know, see, um, anyone who has a job where they, like, directly interface with the public... Because, yeah. I, like, when I used to, like, years and years and years ago, used to work in mine at a bar and stuff like that, you don't realise how fucking odd people are. Uh, you know, yeah. um, until you have to deal with a large volume of people, and it it must be even worse for you because they're like bottlenecked into you, the door beside you. Do you know what I mean? You must uh, come across some fucking weirdos, man. Aye, uh, <clears throat> uh, that's pretty much the job. Basically. <laughs> Just driving weird weirdos. Aye, uh, I mean you do get nice people, and, but uh, there's a lot of weirdos that go on the bus. Do you ever get any fights? Uh, um, no, no, really. I was thinking about this earlier on, actually, uh, and I was thinking, I don't know if I can mention that, but <laughs> oh, I, remember, I remember right at the start, uh, there was this guy that was just being an arsehole, and then they ended up getting like punched and then flung off the bus by the two the two guys. That, wow. Like he was just talking and talking and talking. Like he wasn't so much aggressive for it. And, but he was just kind of, you know, a pain in the arse. Like, they, they just didn't want to listen to him. And then, yeah. um, he was just being 
because I was like, fucking shot, man. They're just like, and then it gets, gets punched, and then I'm like, hey, what do I do now? Like, somebody's going to need to go off this bus, and then they fucking plug them off. I'm like, well, that's them separated. <laughs> Should I tell them to go off? And I was like, right, well, I better wait until I get to the next stop because then I'm going to kill in the country. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I went to the next stop and I'm thinking, should I tell them to go off? Should I tell them to go off? And then they pressed the bell and they got off anyway. So I was like, oh, that's that problem. Dealt with. <laughs> but no, there's not really a lot of fights, oh. really. No. Even, so, even, I've done the night shift for ooh. a couple of years uh, in the summer. I used to do it in the summer for a couple of years. But it's, it's only... Friday nights and Saturday nights, mm-hmm. so it's and yet you you get the following weekend off, so it's every second weekend, um, so it's only two nights a fortnight, and then so you see you need it, you get PTSD, fucking <laughs> doing the night shift, surely. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tell you what, the night I had never had any bother on the night shift. Uh, I was dreading it at the start, but I was looking forward to uh-huh. getting like every second weekend off because uh, weekends are hard to come by you know, as a bus driver. Really, um, yeah. so it was good to do that, but. I, I was dreading it and I thought this was going to be brutal some nights but honestly everyone just wants to take up the road My, uh, yeah. so never, had any, never had any bother on it at all I mean some people people drinking and smoking but that time of night man who am I to jump out and <laughs> hey put that fag <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just get them up the road <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly so we felt um, it's just you mentioned it it's, it's literally just reminding me so a, a friend of mine I used to play football with um he, he worked um, like Stirling. He lived in Denny, but like that sort of direction. Um, and it was his early, like just started on the buses. Um, basically, got this. Got he was doing this bus, and he kind of didn't really know his route. Didn't really know where, where he was meant to be going. So then he was like, ah. and kind of, and the wheel and the old the old birds on this on his bus kind of like. I don't know. I oh, know, sorry, right. you know where you're going, son? Ah, just just down here, just down. Basically used him like a taxi service and got him to drop him <laughs> off like, outside the door. Uh, this will do you here, he's asked me for a bus stop. Uh, I've heard that happen before. Because he's done it for one. <laughs> it was like, oh, fuck. I mean, and that's how fuck, try to go to that street. <laughs> that's him. Yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, Especially up in East Kilbride, I used to go up to, well I still do East Kilbride, but right at the start, I'd never been to East Kilbride, and then they were sending me up on a bus, and, and, but these routes are like so long, like it's never just like, a straight road, it's there and back, there and back, it's always like, the one end, like Clyde Bank, through the city, and then through everywhere else first, then you need to go to East Kilbride, yeah. and then how many roundabouts is there in Oh, right. pull, but, pull them in city, isn't it? Uh, but no, that's what they said. Some people said to me, if you're, because they only show you the route once, but they're showing you about five routes in the space of three days. And uh, so a couple of the guys said, right, if you're struggling, just jump out, ask somebody on the bus, they'll they'll know where, where it's going. Uh, and so I've done that a couple of times. And then I've, I've got to get to a bit and you'd be like, right, somebody was coming on the bus and they would say, oh, I'm going to the terminus. And I'm like, right. Stay there. I, 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 like, if I put money in, uh, I'd say, right, here, take an day ticket and tell me how we get to the terminal. <laughs> and I've done that, like, I think everyone does that in their first, first year until they mm-hmm. can get, get used to it. Because uh, it is it's quite a lot to take in at the start. Like, a lot of drivers will come out, come in and it's no for them. Like, there must be a high turnover. Really? People that uh, come in. Uh, there must be a high percentage of people that come in and then within six months they're away. Um, I don't know how I have lasted nine years, <laughs> um, but I it's just it's quite a lot to take in. It's yeah, quite I can intense. imagine. Uh, so <clears throat> I was kind of I was wanting to talk to you about comedy during lockdown. So obviously, like you were saying, you had your your sellout show and all that, and um, then that fucked with COVID and stuff. So, have, what have you done during lockdown to keep yourself sharp? Or have you done anything to keep yourself sharp? Well, to be honest, uh, I haven't done like anything stand-up wise at all. Um, but this week, as well as this podcast, I've actually got two two gigs booked in. The online gigs. I've got um, a gig on Tuesday. It's called Buzzwords. Um, I don't know how it works. 
but uh, there's uh, some sort of game like the viewers can uh, they get it's like a bingo buzzwords like they can if, I think it's free to watch but you can buy in and then like you can win it's like a bingo there's words on a bit of paper and then while they're watching the comedians if they say a word they score it off and then whoever gets like a full house whatever right, okay. will win the first full house I don't know how it works but that's the gist of it but right. that's me just Got to do a 10 minute set. Because um, I was like, so will I get cut off if I say too many words? And he's like, no, no, just, just do a 10 minute set. Uh, don't worry about the other aspect of the show. Just turn up and oh, like, I'll just do it like this. Um, but I, so that'll be the first time in about seven or eight months I've done a, a gig. So I'm looking forward to that. And there's a Halloween gig as well <laughs> at the end of the month that I've been asked to do. But I think that's just a, a couple of minutes. I'm not sure actually. I'm not looking at it. I think it's just a two or three minute video to send in mm-hmm. for like a. They'll, they'll put it all together and put it out there on Halloween. All right, cool, um, man. But aye, so, so I, in lockdown, I never, I've not done stand-up, but I have been playing Hangman, like, uh, online, pretty much the whole of uh, this year, like, since since the lockdown properly started. Uh, I'd seen comedians were doing things online, um, just for lockdown, daft wee things online. Yeah. And I thought, right, what could I do with me? And then I was like, no, I remember I used to play Hangman in school all the time. That was class. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so I, I came up the road and I said to her, I was like, I think I might play Hangman online. Like, and then I was thinking, she will either say, no, that's a stupid idea. Or she'll say, oh, on you go, see what happens. And she's like, on you go. So if she'd said no, I'd have been like, right, yeah, you're right, it sounds terrible. And never done it. But yeah. she was like, oh, on you go. So we went yeah. for it, and uh, I think the first night I'd done it, uh, there might have been about 10 people watching, just out of curiosity. And I think I only done, like, three celebrities, mm-hmm. like, written down in paper, uh, and just just went with it, and then done it again, just kept doing it. And then after about 10 episodes, uh, I was like, this is all right, people are coming back to watch. And then I thought, right, I need to kind of make it a wee bit more interesting. So like, I started to put more in. So there was like four or five or six celebrities. But I was doing it so that there was they've always got something in common. Like, right, okay. So there's a link between them all. Yeah. And then at the end, you need to guess guess the link. Um so that was keeping it interesting and it kept going and going and going. We done it, we ended up doing a uh, hundred episodes in a row, like every night in lockdown. Wow. And then after the hundredth episode put it down to four nights a week. So I'm still doing it four nights a week. Um, but it's not just me. I've, I've, well, I've probably, there's, well, actually, I've done 155 episodes so far. Um, I've probably done about 125 of them. I've had guest hosts come in mm-hmm. as well. Comedians. Uh, yeah. My pal, he was the first one. He'll kill me if I don't mention him. Uh, my mate Ross, he'll, he's not a comedian or a musician. He's an engineer. Right? But, um, <laughs> And a hangman host. <laughs> uh, cheers, cheers, Ross. Uh, Get that in the LinkedIn profile, big man. <laughs> <laughs> so, I so I've had, I've had, in fact, he was the first one that done it because I was waiting to do a back shift, right? And I was thinking, right, we're doing this every night in lockdown. I'm going to do this on back shift. So I said to him, Do you want to cover for me? And uh, so he done it, and then he's done about five or something since. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, we know we tarry him. He's, he's doing it the night, actually. Obviously, this is going out later on, isn't it? But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's he's hosting the night, so he he'll, he'll be going live in about fifteen twenty minutes. Uh, Tarium Dean uh, Hangman sounds fucking dangerous. Oh, it's brilliant! It's honestly it's brilliant. <laughs> um, but with Tim, with the people like uh, Billy Kirkwood, oh, uh, aye. Kristen Woody, uh, Tom Urey, wherever city well, he's not in it anymore, but uh, uh, well, he's been train spotting still. Well, game. T- Tom Urey is the brother of our old head teacher at school. All oh, right. Jeff Yuri. Really? Ah, that's Jeff Yuri's bro. Right, I didn't know that. Didn't ah, know right. that. I, would, I mean, my, I've, my, lasting, my lasting memory of that guy is watching him punch a junkie. Yes. The school. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I'm moving junk. This junkie okay. came into school and he was there with the jammies <laughs> and this junkie kicked off and he fucking pillowcased him. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting this. Because it was it no the something best day ever. <laughs> Mr. Castles, he pushed Mr. Castles, and That's then right. Jeff, and then Mr. Yuri fucking lamped the guy. <laughs> so tell well, me, well, so how many people are watching the Hangman? 
Um, there's a, a regular, like, core of about 20 people that come back. There's, there's always kind of between 20 and 30 people watching. Um, and then just like, a lot of regulars sometimes with people yeah. coming back and they'll be in for a while or new people come in. Like, But there's, there's always about 20 to 30 people watching uh, live. Um, but we've changed, we've changed the, the format a wee bit. We're, so right now it's, as I said, the link. Like, so I was doing like six celebrities in a link, but then I've changed it. So I do f- like two sections now. So I do four celebrities and then a link, and then the second section is uh, four films of TV shows right. or a mix of them, and then you need to work out who the actor or actress is that I'm looking for, who's been in all four of them. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of brought that oh, in right. because after about 120 episodes, like it's hard to like think of like links. Because no. <laughs> right. I was doing, I started doing like two links a night. I was like, I split it into four and four. And I was like, if I'm doing two a night, like I was just getting, how am I to think of all these links? But people do send links in and all that. And yeah, like, yeah. but um, so I thought I'd try to change it up a bit. So that opened up completely new like door and there was so much more opportunity so I've got that's the two sides of it there's six, four celebrities now what have they got in common um, I think the last last night what episode or two nights ago we don't do it on a Tuesday um, there, there was four celebrities and the, they were all women so I think that was a bit of a clue because two people guessed it that they, they were all pregnant so that was the, the link I was looking for there but honestly we've been through so many like because people will come in and who don't watch it very often. Now, but like, what's the link? And uh, people will be guessing. Oh, they've all got the same middle name. Uh, and then they'll be like, oh, they've all, they're all right-handed. And then the answer, <laughs> the answer will be something like, oh, they all they all wear glasses. And then somebody somebody will be like, how the fuck were we meant to know that? And I was like, listen, listen, this is episode one hundred and forty-four, right? Yeah. <laughs> We have done, we've done all the easy ones, like, oh, they've all been in The Simpsons, they've all been in Friends, right? We need to, we need to mix up a bit make you think, right? So that's it. The, the links can be, honestly, can be, like, Blue Eyes was a good one. Um, there was, and then there was one, because sometimes, see if they get it dead easy and they get it straight away. Oh, for fuck's sake, I'm going to make it so hard for you as the morning. <laughs> and then like, <laughs> do a pure impossible one. I remember You said a victim of your own success. You brought this <laughs> in yourselves a lot. They're, they're all professionals, like they're all brilliant, <laughs> isn't it? They all because they all guess the names dead quick and you know, all that and people will be coming in new and they'll be like, fucking hell man, how am I going to compete with all these? <laughs> um, I so I was like, I'm gonna come I'm gonna come back tomorrow and do an impossible one, you'll never ever care that. So I've done four four celebrities. Um I think one or two of them were Scottish and one was a woman. Uh, so I was trying to, like, because the, the answer was they get married in a suit. <laughs> so, and I was like, Nate Cunt's getting that. Nate Cunt's getting um, that. And because yeah. I, I thought, well, what are you getting is that one for? And I was like, well, there's two Scottish people and a woman. So, you, like, if it was all, I don't know, it was in my head it made sense. But no, it does make sense because you, if you're getting married in Scotland, you're going to wear a kilt and if you're a woman... Aye, aye, that's what I was yeah, getting at. Or a, or a, a woman would maybe wear a... Aye, that's what I was getting at. A woman would wear a dress. A couple of women that wore a suit and then... I think it was Kevin Bridges was one of the males and someone else, but they get married in a suit. So I was like, right, there you go. And they got it. So I was like, get it up, you. <laughs> <laughs> get it up. That's what you get. <laughs> That's so, quality. um, just to uh, sorry, before we move on from Highman, where do people? Where can people find the link? Uh, it's Facebook dot com <laughs> forward slash Jimmy Kirk twenty nine. So it's just just on Facebook. Facebook from my sweet got my comedy bus driver page. <laughs> comedy <laughs> bus driver. Funny people, bus driver in Glasgow. Do, pe- <laughs> <laughs> do people ever like, recognise so- you from from like? Do people come on the bus and go, "Hey!" So that that's happened about three times. <laughs> uh, so I've been well doing comedy a bit. Just over two years, but obviously it's fucked up. But I, that in yeah. that in that say two years, that that happened three times. People came on and said, "Oh, were you, were you at the stand? Were you at uh, Wild Cabaret the other night?" I was like, "Ah, or no, they never." 
sometimes they don't say the venue and I'm like, oh, where did you see me? No, oh, where was Cabaret? And I was like, oh, brilliant, great night. <laughs> and then, <laughs> uh, but then there was, this, there was this other time and it happened out in the street and uh, my depot for the buses is in Scottsdale, right? So yeah. we walk out of Scottsdale and go on onto Dumbarton Road to pick the bus up sometimes. And as I was walking uh, along a street, kind of a street where anyway, uh, this guy, there was like a bridge, I don't know if you know Scotland, but uh, there was like a cycle path. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was walking under the bridge, this guy just came off the cycle path. And he was looking at me, looking at me right? I was like, what the fuck's he looking at me for? And I, I thought like he was going to jump me or something. Like, <laughs> just the way he was looking at me, I was like, nice. Keep my eye on him, and I put I put my phone in my pocket just so I was ready. Like, to, like I just thought this is not going to end well. And then he came up to me, and he was like, "Oh, were you were you in the no?" And then everyone said that he was like, "Oh, I recognise your face." And I was like, "Aye, we're fake." And then he was like, "Oh, were you? Do you do comedy?" And I was like, "Aye, mate." Yeah. <laughs> So he, he Look, said it to me uh, in the stand, just at one of the red rows, I think. And then, uh, but he said, "Oh, you are brilliant." And then he said, "I didn't think you were a, a real bus driver. I thought you were just making all that up for, for, for a joke." I was like, "No, I'm a, a real bus driver." Because <laughs> he said that he had the uniform on. He's like, oh, "Fucking real bus driver." And then uh, he was like, "Well, like maybe one day." Character. <laughs> I'm just method boys, I'm method. <laughs> I'm method comedian. You can not believe it. And, uh, he said, well, maybe one day uh, you'll not have to drive buses. So, And I was like, oh, cheers, mate. And I, that was about fucking three years ago or something. <laughs> <laughs> I can live in hope. That must be, must be, because remember I told you, Chris, that I get recognised at the dump? Yes, yes, you did. Somebody caught to me at the dump and went, you're the boy for that podcast? Oh, all right. I was like, <laughs> I mean, for starters, try to get ready an old cupboard. <laughs> I'm, just, I know, like for for um, podcast, obviously being an auditory medium, it's uh, you don't expect to be recognised. Do you know what I mean? Aye, uh, because I, I don't ever watch a podcast. I always listen to them. Yeah, so yeah, because um, well, obviously, because we put this out on YouTube as well. Um, but it was one of those things you're just like. Because I've said this to you before, Chris, I don't ever actually think about anyone listening to this. No, like, no I, I'll be honest, I don't actually either. I, you put I, it out and then it's just... Yeah, I just, I let, like, I, you, I, whenever we're recording, I don't ever think, oh, right, I need to watch what I'm saying. Or, can somebody's going to be, somebody's watching or somebody's Somebody listening. watching yeah. or listening, do you know what I mean? So yeah, when yeah. somebody does come up to you, or, like, I'll get, we'll get messages on Instagram. Do you remember, Chris, when we got our first bit of fan mail? Yeah, I do. It's bizarre. <laughs> it's mad last. Oh. was just like, I've listened to every single one of them. Fucking love it. It's we weird like, you like Thanks. It's weird you that. That's weird, man. Oh, yeah, some people listen to it. Cause, uh, I mean, essentially, I'm well, I'm currently sat surrounded by children's toys because I'm sat <laughs> in a playroom. Like, I've got like, dollhouses and stuff like that all around here. I know it looks like there's nothing in it, but it's just uh, like, chaos. But so, and I'm just sat and just sat in the house. You know what I mean, just mm. you, don't, you don't think you about. Don't, it. I don't just... ever think about it. Do you know what I mean? But I think that's probably a good thing as well, though, because I don't think if you see if we if we genuinely thought that well, we need to kind of be a certain way because people are going to listen to. It, I think it would lose some of its authenticity. Do you know what I mean? Like uh, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I I like swearing and saying. I mean, I say things I shouldn't f- all the time. All on the a time. regular basis. Yeah, yeah right. there's a few of them. I've had, there's a few of them I've had to cut out. Oh, <laughs> the cutting room floor is fucking riddled with fucking verbal just, atrocities just, coming out of Greg's mouth. That just, must be <laughs> the hardest part, like having to edit it all and put it together. I mean, all? I uh, it, it doesn't take as long. It used to, yeah. but now there's a kind of system in, in place so we can kind of get yeah. it done fairly right. quickly, you know. But um, aye, it's a bit like your hangman thing, really. That that. The, the, we've kind of benefited from lockdown thing really like yeah. we've we started this just before the yeah, lockdown yeah. happened really and then I mean I, I came in kind of as the lockdown had happened and it was kind of just one of those things that mm-hmm. we <laughs> we've not got a lot else to focus on because we started we started in January uh, That's right, yeah. started in January and it was me and uh, another chap who mm-hmm. Uh, 
is still involved to a certain degree, but uh, he sponsors us. He's, he's a sponsor. Sponsors his the company sponsors it, but he, as a presenter, he was fucking dug rotten, shite. Right. <laughs> but he's, but swear to God, right? Uh, this guy, he's got a stammer, and he wants to be on a podcast, right? <laughs> he was um, in podcast like in terms. He was a human Labrador, just loads of enthusiasm. Yep. But just didn't really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of everything just went off on a tangent. Yeah, it, couldn't really keep a conversation stream. When you let, when you listen, Labrador is that a dog guy? Eh? <laughs> 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 I'm joking. I was talking to my daughter today. Uh, I honestly I haven't got a clue about dogs. Like, I literally don't know. I I said to her, all I know is a bit four legs and a tail, right? And because uh, I don't know what what we're talking about, but I honestly like I've got no knowledge of dogs and. Uh, because I was, t- me, my, well, my kids love them, right? So every time I walk past a dog, they'll go up and like, say hello to it and try and clap it. And mm. I remember this woman, she came up, a big dog, and they were loving it. And I was like, so what, what kind of dog's that? And see, like, it turns out it was a German Shepherd, right? But mm. just the way she looked at me, it was, like, was this cunt for real? <laughs> like, it was a German Shepherd, obviously. And I, and I had to say to her, I was like, by the way, I don't have a clue about dogs. No, right, right. It's a German Shepherd, and, and that wee thing, I don't even remember what it's called, but she had a big, huge thing, and a, a wee thing. Bye, so I heard, I heard Labrador, I'm, that's a dog, isn't it? Yeah, that's <laughs> a dog, guy. Yeah. Uh, Brilliant. Bye. <laughs> uh, I, actually, do you know what? I don't really, I don't really know anything about dogs either, at all. I actually think people are too effusive about dogs. See, this is one of the things I'm going to have to cut out because I'm about to say some stuff about people that like dogs. I, I just kind of think, right? See, like people are like any like people who are over enthusiastic about all dogs that they see. Right? I'm friends with a couple of people that if walking down the street and they see a dog, they're like, "Oh my god, look at that dog!" And it's the reaction. Yeah. I would probably only have if I saw like a cheetah or <laughs> something that was they meant to be there. Have, that I would not have that reaction. No, but do you know that. Like, well, put this way, right? So you're walking yeah. down the street, right? And you, what uh-huh. do you expect to see? You expect to see a dog. Uh, it's yeah. not something that's going to like, oh, fuck. If somebody was walking a parrot, I'd be like, whoa, what a parrot. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Right, so, yeah, yeah, and I, yeah. I just find it hard to get on board with the enthusiasm that some people have for just seeing a generic dog. Like, oh, yeah, look at his wee bit. It's a dog, man. It's a dog. It's just, you see them all the time. It's oh, like, yeah. it's oh. like, uh, uh, that baffles me. Uh, I'm with you. I, 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 I kind of I get that. And I get people that are kind of over, like, overly familiar with dogs they've no met. I mean, people go down and like, wee, this wee dog, and they start letting it lick his teeth and stuff like that. <gasps> I mean, it's Aye. just... Uh, it's... How is that acceptable? <laughs> I don't know. It's I don't not know. acceptable. It's unacceptable. <laughs> it's fucking god-awful. Hey. It's not... Like, do, do, do what else me? Do you else? want a dog to lick your teeth more than power you? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> He's just been licking his own arse, but why are uh, I... But, but that's exactly it. I, I, I mean, I've watched my mum's dog eat the same, de- same tennis ball twice. Like, oh. literally <laughs> ate it. Spewed it up and they went, oh, fuck ass, ass, tennis ball, ate that. <laughs> ate I it again. I'm sure they, I've heard the dogs eating their own sick anyway. Oh, oh, yeah, that's, yeah, a bit, that's a bit weird, I don't know. But How my can somebody it. love animals like that? Hey, hey, <laughs> uh, my dog does it. Curls one uh, out and then eats it. That's eats its own shit? Oh, yeah. I've, I've literally watched them lay, lay a cable and then turn around <laughs> and be like, oh, dinner time. <laughs> And chow down on it. It's the worst thing you'll ever see in your life. You're like, oh no, no, stop! <laughs> She's like banging in the window. Hey, <laughs> stop it! <laughs> why? Like, why? Like, I mean, I don't I understand. I, and, and here, right? So, why do people have such an affinity for an animal that eats its own turds? <laughs> they don't the get that. I mean, good question. <laughs> That's we we ask the big questions on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I said, as stick as a pole on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Why do people love an animal that eats its own turds? I just, I, I don't get it. Dogs are like their owners, don't they? So, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I <haven't>. Not <laughs> for years anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I just sniff it. <laughs> That's fu- so. But again, right? But cats don't eat their own shit. 
No, I don't think so. What is it? Why are Doug so keen on re-ingesting no, feces? You must just... have a strong stomach. Go on. <laughs> Go on. Are we ending? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm really expecting this tonight. <laughs> 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 Tell you, man. It's been it's just tangents, man. Just go and start. Right, see, weird shit. see, we said we end up we end up in some weird places, man. I know. <laughs> we end up in some strange places. See, see, you're saying about uh, people. Oh, a dog. Like, I just say, I feel that way about magpies. See, people that say, "Oh, there's a magpie." Oh, salute the magpie. Have you seen that? No, I've not seen that. Oh, you got. Oh, that. I, you, you've got I, to salute it, Mister Magpie. You got to go, morning, Mister Magpie. Oh, this is on to me. Aye, salute uh, the magpie. No, she, she says, oh, there's a one for sorrow and all that. Two one for, for sorrow, two for joy and all that. Aye, okay. Aye. Aye. But I'm like, it's a magpie, like, are they rare or something? No. I don't know. So I'm like, oh, there's a lamppost. Like, what, what are you expecting? <laughs> <laughs> right in the water? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is about magpies. They're almost of kind of a mythical status. It's like, same as a right. red squirrel. Do you know what I mean? Aye, uh, because you don't see is many it? of them. Aye, well, come on, Chris. Come on. Don't act like don't you know about magpies? <laughs> magpies are quite common, I'm sure. Oh, who Chris? The magpie guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but magpie uh, Chris, huh? he knows all. But I mean, it. again, right? I would say that this is one of the stranger sentences I'm ever going to say. Magpies are rarer than dogs, right? Uh, I know. Right. So I can yeah. I can see if somebody was to acknowledge the presence of a magpie. I understand yeah. that more than someone going, "There a dog." Aye, but if you're outside, like, maybe if you're in the house, you're like, a magpie, get out of fuck. But if you're outside, like, right? Okay, so here, know. so here is the question then: What animal indigenous to Scotland would you say it's acceptable to stop a conversation and go, "Oh fuck, there's a such and such." Highland cow. Right, the two of you just said things that I didn't hear either <laughs> of them. Right, <laughs> Jamie, what was yours? Um, unicorn, that's the only. That's animal. not indigenous to Scotland. It's not indigenous to planet Earth. Uh, it doesn't exist, does it? No. That's, no. So that's the only time it's acceptable to stop a conversation Whoa. and say, there's an animal. Like, why else no, would no, no, you? No, no, no. What if you saw a beaver or a no, no. fucking wolf? Highland, Highland cow. Mate, no. If I seen a Highland cow no, or a beaver, I feel like. <laughs> What I would say is, what kind of dog is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's some dog. That's <laughs> that dog. Get a lead on that. I, uh, I, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't. I agree. There's some animals. There's definitely some. Like if I saw a, a basking shark, look at that big fucking cow or a hawk. People say about hawks a and stuff all the time. <laughs> like, oh, I don't know why I have to do that. <laughs> what if you saw oh, one of those? Alright, <laughs> oh, oh, right, okay then. <laughs> oh, right, well. You've got a point now. Yeah. <laughs> if if I, see if, if you did see something fly <laughs> past like that. Is that? What I mean, but I would. Um, what if you saw like a basking shark or something? That there is noteworthy. Fuck, get a basking shark. Like out in the, <laughs> out in the, out in the road, out in the pavement. <laughs> I fucking knew you were going to say. I, I, I was going to say. Just in Scotland. Road west, maybe I. <laughs> There's a couple of whales there, but right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. But if you see, if you see something that's rare that you know you don't see all the time, then I think it's fairly acceptable to say, "Oh fuck, Aye. there are such and such." I can't dogs and, and magpies. No, <laughs> they're they're not they're acceptable. Not acceptable. Ah, but I would still. I'm, no, I probably wouldn't acknowledge a magpie's presence. Unless I was in my house. <laughs> Aye, exactly. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Um, so, gentlemen, uh, let's get off animals and let's start talking about other stuff that actually matters. Um, <clears throat> so, Jamie, with um, COVID kind of hopefully, fingers crossed, coming to an end, right? And, uh, well, I haven't said that, this lockdown announcement thing a day doesn't look too smashing. So, no, where, like, what were you, what are your goals for next year, if everything all opened back up again? What was your, what Best your, case scenario. Best case scenario, what are you hoping for? Um, <laughs> See a couple of magpies. <laughs> oh, it's such a... It's, 
that question? Because you know what I mean. Like, how long is this going to go on for? This is. I know, man. This is going on right in the spring, summer, I think. Yeah. Um. Easy. But no, I don't know. It's just going to. I just you just kind of wait and see. Like obviously we. Getting like I, I feel like I'm no in a particular rush to get right back into it because it's going to be a slow. Start. It's not going to just get back to normal like that, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, mm-hmm. I think. I will obviously carry on and try and get gigs and get back into it, but I feel like the the professionals, the ones that are the, it's their full time job, like I think it's best to maybe let them like get like all the paid work and get all the gigs, like because that that's their job and they've probably been doing like a lot more than me, like stand up wise anyway through this. Mm-hmm. I've just been playing hangman. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I, I, that's why I'm looking forward to Tuesday to do like a 10 minute set stand up. Like, I've done that for seven or eight months. So, that, this will be like, this will be weird on Tuesday uh, doing that. But it's over Zoom. Uh, StreamYard. Right. Because what I was actually, I, I forgot to say this when you mentioned it before. Obviously, comedy is very much about, we kind of touched on it earlier on about being in the room and the atmosphere, right? And obviously, with doing it online, you're probably not able to get mu- as much back from the crowd as you normally would as far as reactions concerned. So gauging, well, that's working or that's working. It's going to be, uh-huh. it's going to be more difficult, you know? Mm. And obviously timing's really a big thing with comedy as well. So, and if there's a delay, you know, if you try and say uh-huh. a punchline, I don't mean to put the fear out of you here, by the way, you're thinking, fuck, I never thought of that. But, <laughs> um, like, have you, have you got a contingency for think, or are you just going to fucking batter in? See, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think I'm going to get any interaction at all. I think I'm just going to be talking to a camera on my own. I don't think I'm going to have any You're not going to hear feedback back. at all. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I think I'm just going to go and do it, hope for the best. And then after it, like, I might be able to see the comment section. Because then people might be typing things in or um, laughing yeah. faces or whatever. Um, I don't know how it's going to work. but I, And then the guy that's that's hosting it, he's obviously going to come back and say, right, the, somebody got a full house or na- somebody, nobody got any, because it's a, that buzzword mm-hmm. thing. So I, I don't think I'm going to get any really during it, but after it, they might tell me a bit about it and then I might see some comment. I don't know how it's going to work, but it'll That's, be interesting. That, that'll be a bizarre experience just to be doing your stuff Aye, straight, it will be. straight <laughs> into your, straight, I mean, and not getting anything back. I know, yeah. I know. But, <laughs> It'll be good. It's like a it's like a friendly match. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pre-season. It's like, it's a pre-season friendly. Why not? Aye, so aye, it's just experience, and I've not done. It'll be good because I've not done it for so long. So, do you think that, that when you do go back to performing in front of like proper crowds, that you will go back that re- like? Re- Resort back to feeling like this is your first gig again in front of. Aye, definitely. Aye, it'll be a real feeling. What I'm kind of goals for next year is to now that I've thought about it for a second. Um, so basically, what I would want to do um, before I thought about anything else, I want to get that EZ the driving buses. I want to get that done out in a, a venue. Yeah. But I'm, I kind of rush straight back into that. I need to go out and mm-hmm. do some gigs again and get yeah, feel, absolutely. get a feel for it. Um, so I want to get that next year done, uh, and then the hangman that we're doing uh, with the guest hosts and then the regular audience, we want to do a hangman live live show at some point as well next year. That'd be so, interesting. Aye, we've got we've been I've spoke about it uh, on the show all the time. Everyone is up for it. It's just about getting the venue and like COVID and all that getting that with us. So, but I so that's a goal for next year is getting. The, the Hangman live show and then the 80s of the driving buses doing them. Um, so my, my, for Hangman, I'm kind of trying, not trying, I'm, I'm planning how it's going to, because we can't do that, I can't do this forever, right? Yeah. But um, I'm just trying to plan how, when to stop. So I'm working it now so that episode 200 is going to be like the last one. Uh, and that's going to fall on Christmas Eve, about half past ten. Now, I don't know if that's a good idea or a bad idea yet. Uh, I might change it, but I think Christmas Eve, everyone's going to be in the house. The pubs are going to be shut at ten at the latest anyway. Maybe even six, yeah. going by what's happened yeah. today. 
So yeah. everyone will be in the house. Hopefully, they've done everything they need to do. And then at half past ten, it will be like the final episode of Hangman Live Christmas Eve. And then it will be like an extra. It will be like an hour show. Normally, it's half an hour, but yep. for like big episodes, I do like a double, and it's like an hour long. Um, and it'll be like the last the episode hundred. That was a big one, and I had like balloons and all that. And <laughs> we done. We got a. And I had drunk. Walked out. No, I walked out with. A bottle of Prosecco. I'd said I was going to get champagne, but I was like, nah, I'll just get the Italian <laughs> champagne. <right." laughs> and then like, we done a hamper as well. We got a hamper. There was me and my mate had set up, put in hundreds of like drink and like sweets, crisps, like loads of random stuff. Uh, the hamper itself was probably worth about seventy quid. The way all the stuff, but we'd put in um, just stuff like there was like we, there was an auction. No, no, an auction. It was a there was a raffle as well for the Beatson yeah. that um, now this has nothing to do with Hangman Live, but somebody that hosted it, Christopher John Stevens, he raises money for the Beatson every year at the comedy festival, um, and they do a raffle. So he was hosting it, and then we kind of got involved, and like we, lots of people that are playing Hangman ended up buying tickets for his raffle. Um, so that's where, like, that's what I'm going to say, I ended up winning uh, two wrestling figures. Uh, and which probably, <laughs> but I, I don't I didn't really have any need for them, so I, they were stuck, chucked them into the hamper, just anything that we could. Yeah. But I, I think the hamper was worth about 70 quid, and then we wow. sold tickets really? for, I think it was a pound or two pound a strip, and then we made like about 200 quid, and then me and my mate took about 20 quid, 25 quid each for the stuff that we'd put in, and then we've got 150 quid sitting still for. So that's the, the starting budget of this live show. Like, right. I'm gonna, that's that's what's going to go. We've got we've got to start now to get like the venue and all that. And obviously there will be ticket sales. Like, mm-hmm. but it's going. To, I don't know how the hangman side it's going to work, but it, it's just going to be like music. Call, like, going to get the, the people that have hosted it. I'm going to get like five or six of the comedians yep. to do like so. It'll just be like comedy night. Uh, we have Tom Tom Uri, who's hosted that. He's he does DJ and he DJs in Club Tropicana. So I said to him, like I said, I'll pay you like for the gig because you want to come and be the DJ for that because he's part of the show. Like he's done five, maybe five guest hosts for Hangman Live, and he watches it all the time. So like he's part of the audience yeah, as well. Yeah. Like, they all know yeah. him. So he said he'll get involved and he'll help me like try and find a venue and all that. So it's looking it's looking good. Like just whenever we're allowed to do it, we can. Because there's um, Bongo's Bingo at SWG3. That's something I've never ever been to. Is that, there's another thing, Bingo Loco, is that like that? Yeah, or? so it's kind of the same. Yeah. So the guy that o- the guy that owns Bongo's Bingo is a guy called Johnny Bongo. Right. Um, but he started off just doing like that mental bingo idea, but in pubs in Liverpool. I think it was Liverpool. Um, and uh, and then it just blew up and Lewis Capaldi it was on stage at the SWG free bit so I I've, I've just done one I have a mate someone who lived down in South Wales and they had one done in like in South Wales in this like warehouse in South Wales and they had a guy who played Barry Fee <laughs> remember Barry Fee <laughs> oh yeah Sean Sean Ryder Sean, 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 not Sean, Sean Ryder Wallace. Sean Wallace so, no is it no, Sean Ryder is the guy for the Happy Mondays. What am I talking about? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I just I just know him as Barry for East End. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but he was there like singing and all. <laughs> I just remember seeing my mate Snapchat, and I'm like, "What? What are you at? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> People are dancing on tables and stuff. Like, what is this? Yeah, it looks awesome. Uh, it's but, chaos. Because uh, like, this is the direction I want Hangman Life mate, to go in. <laughs> Hangman's got it's got the capabilities, mate. But because that's Barry, a, I, I feel less than. <laughs> 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 Mate, just I, just uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll love it that in like a year's time we'll see like a video of SWG three and Dean Gaffney's <laughs> doing the worm on stage or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, aye, man, right. Well, I think uh, we'll try to end things there, gentlemen. That's uh, that's probably a good way to end. People can find uh, hopefully keep their ear to the ground for uh, a game of rather erratic and exciting hangman in the not too distant future. Sundays, uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays at half past nine. Boom. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to try it. I'm going to come on. Aye. I'll, I'll be there uh, tomorrow night uh, doing it. Tarium. Tarium should be writing about it you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he should be right in the middle of 
Hangman Live episode one five six. <laughs> wow, man, that's a lot of Hangman. Strong. Right, okay, Jen. Well, I'm <laughs> going to sign off just now. Then, so um, thanks very much for listening, folks. Please hit those like. Thanks very much for having me. Not a problem at all. Just have yes. jumped in on my sign and I felt Jamie boy. Oh, sorry, mate. There <laughs> you go. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for listening, folks. Please hit those like and subscribe buttons.